Howdy folks, welcome back. So someone was asking about a variation of the teleport video, so thought we'd give it a shot. So instead of being able to teleport freely around the map, now this will check to see which one you're looking at and move to it accordingly. So if you got them all set up like that, you can be able to move them all around, but if you ain't got nothing selected, you don't move to nothing. Alright, so let's jump into it. So I got a clean project right here. And I'm going to set that like that, just because that will bug me if it's not. So this little thing will hide or show that. But I am going to, first thing first, I'm going to go to the geometry and I'm going to create a little teleport target point thing. So y'all probably, or you'd probably already have a mesh for this, but I'm just going to create one real quick. So you can just use whatever you're you know, wanting to use. So I'm just going to use this. And I'll create both. Brush settings. No. Yes, brush settings. create a blueprint actor so this part you will want to follow along with so I'm going to create a blueprint actor of a TP target underscore BP I'm going to find the mesh that I want to use for the target point which in my case is that thing I just made and add it in So then with that selected I want to add in a cone because this will be a representative for the platform but this thing's location is what the character is actually going to move to. So wherever you set this will be where your, tele where your character teleports to. But I want it to have no collision. So that's basically all you want to do for this. I'm going to replace that real quick so I don't get confused. There we go. Alright, now the main meat of what we're doing is in here. Oh, one more thing inside the teleport target. So, click the self up here, go into tags, and I'm going to add a tag of a TP target. And that's all we need to do. So then I'll right click and open up the character. add a begin play function because I'm gonna have mine update instead of using the tick I'm just gonna set up a function event that fires off every 0 0.01 seconds you can either do this when you're looking at something and you press a key or if you want it to just update perpetually however your game works this is just the way I'm doing it for demonstration purposes so I'll add a custom event called trace check and call that straight off the begin play. What we want to do for this is I'm going to drag out my follow camera and I want to do a sphere trace by channel. The channel being visibility so that doesn't have to change. From the follow camera I want to get its world location for the start and the forward oh, forward vector so it'll start at its location and then we'll go forward we'll drag off of it vector times float this will be how many units forward it shoots so I'm going to set mine to 5000 oh wrong button so I'm going to drag this back 
from the world location, I'm going to get vector plus vector. Because we're going to take the forward vector and go forward this many units and add that to the world location. So it starts here, shoots forward that far, and that's where it'll end. I'm going to set its radius to about 20 just because it gives a little bit of leeway. You don't have to be pinpoint precise with it. Off the out hit, I'm going to break the hit result. I'm going to hook up a branch to this return value, which will determine if there was a hit at all. For the hit actor, we want to find out if it has a tag. That tag being the one we set up, TP target. Set up another branch. So if there's a hit and it has this tag, then we want to promote this to a variable called TP target. If there's no hit, we want to drag out this TP target and set it to nothing. So if there's no hit, then we want it empty. And if the hit doesn't have that tag, we still want it empty. That way we're only trying to access when we have an actual viable target. Then we'll hook up a retriggerable delay. I'm going to set it to 0 0.01 just so it fires off pretty regularly. And then I'll call that trace check again. You want to make sure all the false and everything is hooked up so that it feeds back through this loop perpetually. But you want to make sure you have a delay so that, because otherwise it'll fire off a warning that says found an infinite loop. So. Alright, now down here I'm going to add a Q or a, a button press event. I'm going to use the Q key because it's one of the easier ones to find. I'm going to drag out that TP target and find out if it is valid because if it's not, we don't want to do anything, but if it is, we want to proceed. If it is valid, then we want to get all actors of class. The class being that TP target that we set up. And then for the array that it shoots back, we want to do a for each loop with break. This will cycle through all of these actors and find the one that matches this because we're going to drag off the array element and type an equal sign so if it equals this object. Then we'll add a branch. Over here we'll right click add a custom event called found because we want it to break. Once it finds the one we're looking for, we don't want it to keep cycling through and checking. So if it finds the one that equals what we're looking at, then we will call that found event that will break our look. And when it's completed, then we will, what is that thing called? Cone? Just cone. Okay. So from the array element that it found, we want to drag off and get the cone. God, I cannot spell. From the cone, we will get its world location. Now we want to do a vector plus a vector and add night. 90 to it because otherwise your character will be clipping through the ground. And we want to set actor location, target being the self. So we'll go from completed to setting the actor's location to the location that we just found. So let's give it a shot. So I've got one here. And my camera is probably shooting straight through the player. So I'm going to just set an offset real quick. So if you need to set an offset, you can go to the camera boom and do a socket offset. Not a target offset. That'll make it to where it doesn't do right. But the socket offset, it'll let you do like this. Keeps the character right there. Hmm. 
and just to be able to see I'm gonna do a for one frame draw debug that way I can see that mm, it's cuz my mesh doesn't actually have collision that's right so give me just one second let me Yours should be fine if you're using a mesh. I am using this thing, so it's not really registering very well. There it goes. All right, so now when I look at it, it'll teleport right to it. And wherever I move this thing inside, that's where you teleport to. So, if you have a bunch of them set up, Teleport to each one that you want to. Of course, you can do all the lerping and all the effects and all that, but this will be how you get the information of where you're teleporting to. So, like, if you add a lerp, let's just do that real quick. Just for funsies, I'll never say that again. Lerp. I will say lerp. That one's fun. Lerp. I'm going to open it up and just set. This is just a demonstration, so I'm going to go kind of quick. Just so you can see how you can just kind of iterate on top of it. So we'll update. We want to lerp the vector. Yeah. So then. Oh, <laughs> right, add the keys. Otherwise, it just does nothing. So, there, yeah, see? And you'll be able to do just that. So, quick little rundown creating a target blueprint. All you really need is just a mesh that represents your target, and then the actual landing point that you want inside here you'll do your check to see if you're looking at the thing that has the tag if you are you set that to your current target if not set it to empty and then if you have a target then it'll find it'll get all the things like that and find the one you're looking at specifically and pull the information from it for you to teleport to so hopefully this was helpful. If I need to elaborate further on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by.